Okay, today, Sarah ate the spoils. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, they will question thee about the spoils. Say, the spoils are God's and the apostles. Therefore fear God, and settle this among yourselves, and obey God and his apostle, if ye are believers, believers are they, believers are, are they only whose hearts thrill with fear when God is named, and whose faith increaseth at each recital of his signs, and who put their trust in their Lord, who observe the prayers and give alms out of that which which we have supplied them. These are the believers, ne'er do great awaiteth them in the presence of their Lord, and forgiveness, and a generous provision. Remember how thy Lord caused thee to go forth from thy home on a mission of truth, and a part of the believers were quite adverse to it. They disputed with thee about the truth, which had been made so clear as if they were being led forth to death and saw it before them and when god promised you that one of the two troops should fall to you and ye desired that they who had no arms should fall to you but god proposed to prove true the truth of his words and to cut off the uttermost part of the infidels the uh, misbelievers that he might prove his truth to be the truth and bring to not that which is not And bring not that which is not through, though the impious were adverse to it. We, when ye sought the succor of your Lord, and he answered you, I will verily aid you with a thousand angels, you know, lightnings, rank on rank. And God made this as pure good tidings, and to assure your hearts by it, for succor cometh from God alone, verily God is mighty, wise, when sleep a sign of security from him fell upon you, and he sent down upon you water from heaven, that he might thereby cleanse you, and cause the pollution of Satan to pass from you, and that he might gird and that he might gird up your hearts and establish your feet by it when thy lord spake unto the angels you know the unfallen angels i will be with you thereby establish ye the faithful i will cast your dread in the hearts of the infidels you know the misbelievers strike off their heads then and strike them off at their from their very fingertip and Sir 47 also mentions the beheading and the cutting of the, of the limbs, but only an idiot is going to think this is anything but the battlefield, um, because this is very much the battlefield. But the interesting thing on fall, Nathala, you know, the, the extra. So 8, 12, and 48. Five and eight and then he bends and four. 
lamps are something prettier. Let's see, some of these reflections. Um, you know, it's it's in the middle of the battle, but the end fall. No Muslim, no jihad in the face of the law. It's going to be for to increase borders, to gain spoils, to gain slaves, to force people to convert. These may happen as extra, but that's what the term means. Extra. Take the roots. Take. Oh, okay. Let's just continue there. Bum them and at their their heads them and strike them from their very fingertips, and we're also forbidden in Islam, under the example of Prophet Muhammad, that he he repeatedly told people, "Do not mutilate the corpses." So again, anyways, this because they have opposed God and His Apostle, and whoso shall oppose God and His Apostle, verily gone will be severe in punishment. This is for you, taste it then. And for the infidels, you know, misbelievers, is the torture of the fire. O oh, ye who believe, when you meet the marshaled host of the misbelievers, turn not your backs to them. So, again, they're attacking you in groups. Whoso shall turn his back to them on that day, unless he turn aside to fight or to rally, to some other troop shall incur wrath from God. Hell shall be his abode and wretched the journey. So it was not ye who slew them, but God slew them. And those shafts were God's, not thine. He would make trial of the faithful by a gracious trial from himself. Verily God heareth, knoweth this that God might also bring to naught the craft of the infidels. Misbelievers, I don't like this Christian preacher's way of speaking sometimes. Um, because it implies things to people that it doesn't imply in the Quran. But remember, we're only the means for our good deeds. That doesn't mean we don't get credit for them, but we are the means. When we do good deeds, we're doing God's work and God's work in this. If ye desired a decision, now hath the decision come to you. It will be better for you if ye give over. If you return, we will return, and your foes, though they be many, shall never avail you aught, for God is with the faithful. O ye faithful, obey God and his apostle, and turn not away from him, now that ye hear, and be not like those who say we hear. When they hear not, for the vilest beast in God's sight are the deaf, dumb, who do not understand. You know, uh, in context. Look at that in context, not, it's not, it's without understanding. There's a lot of people with disabilities who believe and had God known any good in them, he would have certainly had made them hear. But even if he had made them hear, they would certainly have turned back with a, with withdrawn and withdrawn afar. O oh, ye faithful, make answer of God, and as apostle when he calleth you to that which giveth you life, know that God cometh in between a man and his own heart. And to him shall ye be gathered. Be afraid of temptation, and evil doers among you will not be the one, the only ones on whom it will light. And know ye that God is severe in punishment. And remember when ye were few and reputed weak in the land.
Ye feared lest men should pluck you away, then was it that he took you in, and strengthened you with his help, and supplied you with good things, that haply ye might give thanks. O ye who believe, deal not falsely with God and his apostle, and be not false in your engagements with your own knowledge, and know that your wealth and your children are temptation, and that God with him is a glorious recompense. O ye who believe, if ye fear God, he will make good your deliverance, and will put away your sins from you, and will forgive you. God is of great bounteousness. And when the unbelievers plotted against thee, who detained thee prisoner, are to kill thee, are to banish thee, they plotted, the God plotted, and the plotters is God the best. And oft as our signs were rehearsed to them, they said, now have we heard, if we please, we could certainly utter its like. Yes, it is near fables of the ancients. And when they said, God, if this be the very truth from before thee, rain down stones upon us from heaven, or lay on us some grievous chastisement, but God chose not to chastise them while thou wast with them, nor would God chastise them when they sued for pardon. But because they debarred from the holy temple, albeit they are not its guardians, nothing is there on the part why God should not chastise them. The God-fearing only are its guardians, but most of them know it not, and their prayer at the house of God is no other than whistling through their fingers and clapping of hands. Taste then the torment, for that ye have been unbelievers. And we learned a couple things here from verse 85 of Surah 8. That the musical instruments don't count as prayer. And that they're not appropriate for a masjid. Prophet Muhammad would have the people, when they go by a masjid, stifle their musical instruments. But did he absolutely forbid them from everywhere? No. Much less this ridiculous, We found a musical instrument in your thing. We must beat you and take your stuff. No. It has nothing to do with Islam. Taste and the torment for that which you have been unbelievers. And the misbelievers spend their riches with intent to turn men aside from the way of God, spend it they shall, then shall sign be upon them, and then shall they be overcome, and the misbelievers shall be gathered together into hell, that God may separate the bad from the good, and put the one upon the other, and heap them all up, and put them into hell, these are they who shall be lost, say to the misbelievers, if they desist, what is now past shall be forgiven them, but if they return to it, they shall have already before them the doom of the ancients. Fight them, fight then against them till strife be at an end, and the religion be all of it gods. If they desist, verily God beholdeth what they do. And just because you are not finance, uh, you're not physically fighting, paying your money for others to oppress and attack, it's like as if you're doing the same thing. For the strife be at an end, and the religion be all of God's, if they desist, verily God beholdeth what they do, but if they turn their back, Know ye that God is your protector, excellent protector, excellent helper, and know ye that when ye have taken any booty, a fifth, 
part belongeth to God and his apostle, and to the near of kin, and to orphans, and to the poor, and to the wayfarer. If ye believe in God, and in that which we have sent down to our servants on the day of vic the victory, the day of the meeting of the host, over all things is God potent. No. Remember the Battle of Batter here. And no, the booty is not uh, some Sir mix -a -Lot thing here. We're talking about the uh, war spoils. When ye were encamped on the near side of the valley, and they were on the further side, and the caravan was below you, if ye had made an engagement, ye would have failed the engagement, but ye were led into action, notwithstanding, that God might accomplish the thing to be done. You know, things in this material world are accomplished by things in this material world. So God appoints beings to direct, uh, light beings to direct the material world. He directs other physical beings to make decisions. And that he who should perish might perish with a clear token. And that he who liveth might liveth with it. And verily God heareth knoweth. Remember when God shewed them to thee in thy dream as few, had he shown them numerous, ye would certainly have become faint-hearted, and would certainly have disputed about the matter, but from this God kept you, he knoweth the very secrets of the breast, and when on your meeting he made them appear to your eyes as few, and diminished you in their eyes, that God might carry out the thing that was to be done, to God do all things return. Believers, when ye confront a truth, stand firm and make frequent mention of the names of God, that it may fare worth, that it may fare well with you, and obey God and His apostle. And dispute not, lest ye become faint-hearted and your success go from you. But endure with steadfastness, for God is with the steadfastly enduring. And be not like those who came out of their houses instantly to be seen of men, and who turn others from the way of God. God is round about their actions. When Satan prepared their works for them and said, No man shall conquer you this day, and verily I will be near to help you. But when the two armies came inside, he turned on his heel and said, A, I am clear of you, A, I see what ye see not, A, I fear God, for God is severe in punishing, when the hypocrites and the deceased of heart said, Their religion hath misled the Muslims. But who so put us if his trust in God? Yes, verily, God is mighty, wise. If thou didst see when the angels lacka caused the infidels, misbelievers, to die, may smack their faces and their backs, and taste ye the torture and the burning. This for what your hands have sent on before you. God is not unjust to his servants. Their state is like that of the people of Pharaoh and those before them who believe not in the signs of God. Therefore God, who believe not in the signs of God, therefore God seized upon them in their sin. God is mighty, severe, and punishing. This because God changeth not the favor with which he favoreth the people, so long as they change not what is in their hearts, and for that God heareth, knoweth. 
Their state is like that of the people of Pharaoh, and of those before them who treated their Lord's signs as lies. We therefore destroyed them in their sins, and we drowned the people of Pharaoh, for they were all doers of wrong. The worst beasts, truly in the sight of God, are the thankless who will not believe they with whom thou hast leagued and who are ever breaking their league and who fear not god if thou take them to war then by the example of their fate scatter those who shall follow them that they may be warned i don't know why he lists verse 58 as 60 but you know divine love is not for the treachery but anyways or if thou fear treachery for many people throw back to them as thou fairly mayest for god loveth not the treacherous not treacherous actions i think it's a verb uh, it's, anyways I guess, not, I guess it's not. And think that the infidels shall escape us. You know, too far. Not infidels. Catholics, yeah. They shall not weaken. Make ready then against them what force ye can. And strong squadrons. And strong squadrons whereby ye may strike terror into the enemy of God and your enemy, and into others beside them, whom ye know not, whom God knoweth. All that you shall expend for the cause of God shall be repaid you, and ye shall not be wronged. So, very much remember that the striking terror is in a fight, not some generic, that they, they're scared to fight you, not animals. foolish people and not paying attention. They shall not be wrong. And if they lean to peace, lean thou also to it, and put thy trust in God, for he is the hearing, the knowing. And if they seek to betray thee, God will be all sufficient for thee. He it is who hath strengthened thee with his help and with the faithful, and hath made their hearts one. Hadst thou spent all the riches of the earth, thou couldst not have united their hearts, but God hath united them, for he is mighty wise. O prophet, God, and such of the faithful as follow thee, will be all sufficient for thee. O prophet, stir up the faithful to the fight, Twenty of you will stand firm, who stand firm shall vanquish two hundred, and if they be a hundred of you, they shall vanquish a thousand of the infidels, for they are a people who are devoid of understanding. Now hath God made your work easy, for he knoweth how weak ye are. If there be a hundred of you who endure outly, they shall vanquish two hundred, and if there be a thousand of you, they shall vanquish two thousand, by God's permission. For God is with those who are, who are resolute to endure. No prophet hath been enabled to take captives until he had made great slaughter in the earth. Ye desire the passing fruitions of this world, but God desires the next life you know, for you. And God is mighty wise. Had there not been a previous ordinance from God, a severe chastisement had befallen you for the ransom which ye took. Eat therefore the spoils ye have taken. What is lawful and good, and fear God. God is gracious, merciful. O prophet, say to the captives who are in your hands, if God shall know good, to be in your hearts, he will give you good, 
beyond all that hath been taken from you, and will forgive you, for God is forgiving and merciful. Now, there's many instances of this, but someone in particular said, Oh, this was revealed for me, because yes, he, he got back everything again. And if they seek to deal treacherously with you, they have already dealt treacherously with God before. Therefore hath he given you power over them. God is knowing wise. Verily they who have believed and fled their homes and spent their substances for the cause of God. And they who have taken in the, pro the prophet and been helpful to him shall be near of kin the one to the other and they who have believed but have not fled their home shall have no rights of kindred with you at all until they too fly their country yet if they seek aid from you on account of the faith of the faith your part is to give them aid except against a people with whom and yourselves there shall be a treaty in God beholdeth your actions. So any country that gets along with Al Muslimin is exempt from any, you know. But oppressing people kind of would violate the treaty in any in any interaction. The infidels we lend one another mutual help unless you do the same. There will be discord in the land and great corruption. But as for those who have believed and fled their country and fought on the path of God and given the prophet asyl an asylum and been helpful to him, these are the faithful, mercy is their due, and a noble provision. So nowadays the asylum is of the, the freedom to teach and practice Islam and for the people. Many people have fled the soak the Muslim majority countries that either outsiders are attacking or insiders are not ruling by Islam, so they're oppressing the people. The infidels, you know, Muslim believers, lead one another, lend one another mutual help unless ye do the same. There will be discord in the land and great corruption. But as for those who have believed and fled their country and fought on the path of God and given the prophet an asylum and been helpful to him, these are the faithful, merciful is their due and a noble provision. And they who have believed and fled their country since and have fought at your side, those are of you. Those who are united by ties of blood are the nearest of kin to each other. This is in the book of God, verily God knoweth all things. So remember to regard the chief and the kin.